Hey, my love. Oh, like that. Fighting. All fighting. Hey. Hi. Nope, she don't want me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oni and I'm a third year medical student in the US. If this is your first time on this channel, if this is the first time you're seeing my beautiful face, you're very welcome. I make videos on medical school life, medical school applications, um, living as an international in the United States. If you're a pre-med, you're a medical student, or you're just interested in you know learning about stuff like that you're very welcome definitely hit the subscription button and join the family as you can see from the title i will be in this video talking about the md versus do tract if you are considering medicine having been in a do school for about three years and having kind of experienced what life is and what medicine is like with a do degree and having worked with other md students i believe i have a pretty good grasp of the differences between md versus do and i'll be covering all of that in this video so if this is something that you're interested in definitely stick around and let's get right into it. First of all, I'll be talking about what the general medical school training is like in the US. If you're interested in medicine or becoming a doctor in the US, you have to go, of course, after high school, um, you have to go through four years of undergrad, which is the same thing as university or college. Um, you got to do that for about four years. You need a bachelor's degree um, to get into medical school unless you're doing like an accelerated program, which is a whole different thing. And then you have four years of medical school. So that's eight years in total. And then residency could range from two to eight years, depending on what specialty you're going into. This is different from European countries and other countries that do like a six years medical school where they kind of combine everything together, like your university and the medical school are all together. But over here is usually about eight years of school. If you're pursuing medical training in the United States, there's two paths that you could go. You could go the MD route or you could go the DO route. And this is where people have questions or are confused, like what's the difference? Because what most people know is the MD route. MD stands for Doctor of Medicine and DO stands for Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. So if you're trying to go into medicine or you're trying to become a doctor, either the MD route or the DO route would get you to the same destination. Okay, the reason why people are confused about the DO is because um, DO, like I said, stands for a doctor of osteopathic medicine and in other countries people who have the do degrees are osteopaths and in those countries osteopaths are not trained to become physicians they're not actually medical physicians versus here in the u.s if you have a do degree you did go to medical school and you are a medical doctor i'll put a link below so you can learn a little bit more about osteopathic medicine if you're interested so basically and just a generic overview osteopathic medicine was founded on a system of like medical care that promotes the body's innate abilities to heal itself. DO schools tend to emphasize um, a holistic approach to treatment, a holistic approach to treating a patient. It is emphasized and we understand that an individual is more than just their physical or you know how they present physically or how they're presenting medically. There's other things that could affect you as an individual. There's other things that go into you just being you. There's other factors that play into your health in general. Now, this is something that DO schools emphasize, but it doesn't mean that other MD schools do not emphasize this. In fact, when I, when I was applying to medical school, there were several um, MD schools that did emphasize this on their website. There's so many MD doctors that practice holistically and there's doctors, there's DO doctors that do not practice holistically. So this is not to say that only DOs practice holistically and MDs don't. That's absolutely not true. But this is just the underlying principle in um, DO schools. So if that makes sense, we can now go into the differences in the curriculum. When talking about the curriculum, there's literally no difference in what MDs learn versus what DOs learn. We learn the exact same thing. We use the exact same textbooks. The only difference is that DO students also learn OMM, which is known as Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine or Osteopathic Man Manipulative Treatment, as some people will say. I'll go into more detail about OMM. I actually just finished my rotation with OMM. But that's just the one extra thing that we learn as DO students. Aside from that, we learn pathology, pharmacology, anatomy, biochemistry, um, immunology, literally everything. We use Sketchy, we use Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, Anki, like you name it all. We use the exact same things. I have friends from college who are in MD schools and whenever I go to visit, we pretty much study together. We just look up material and we share our, our resources with each other. But the way the curriculum is, you typically get two years of like preclinical years where you're just like doing all the basic sciences. And at the end of the second year, you take your boards. Um, and then by third and fourth year, typically you're doing rotations. After the first two years, DO students are responsible for taking the COMLEX exams, 
Whereas MD students take the STEP exams, which is more universally known. It's more universally known because if if you have schooled outside of the country, um, so you schooled somewhere outside of the U.S. and you're trying to match into a program into, in the United States or you want to come over to the U.S. to work, you have to take those board exams. And the only board exams that you can take really are the STEP exams, so step one, two, or three, before you're able to match. Now, that is not really necessarily applied to us. Um, if you go to a DO school, you're fine taking their complex exams, level one, level two, level three, and and you're fine applying those scores because the DOs and MD match process has been combined. This happened in 2020. And so if you took the complex level one, two or three, you are fine trying to match into um, MD programs or DO programs. They're seeing the same. However, many medical students, including myself, also try to just take the step as well, just to increase your chances of getting into more competitive fields. And I will talk about that in a few minutes. Aside from these few differences, everything else is the same. You're trained the same way, you're learning the same things, or you're doing the rotations in the same places. I am currently on my rotations and I rotate with MD students as well as DO students. I see DO doctors and MD doctors at the same time. In the hospital, you barely can tell the difference between MD or DO unless they tell you that they're one. You're never gonna know unless they let you know. So um, yeah, there's barely any differences between the two. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about OMM. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna talk about this because it's better to show than, than just to hear it. There's so many videos out there about DO versus MD and I remember when I was watching videos I just never really understood what OMM was like I would watch videos and I just really would not understand so I wanted to be able to show what OMM is like um, fully just kind of like explain what we learned but um, it might go longer than I wanted to go. So if you're actually interested in knowing more about OMM just let me know leave it down in the comment section and I'll be very happy to um, do videos where I do OMM or I would just take you guys into the clinic where OMM is being done so you kind of get a, like a better idea. If you've ever been to a chiropractor or physical therapy for example, more so a chiropractor, um, they technically use similar um, techniques to treat patients. As a DO doctor, you are also responsible for um, diagnosing a patient. We actually learn how to diagnose a patient who might be having like a musculoskeletal issue. If you have some kind of misalignment in your spine, for example, we learn how to diagnose that by actually feeling and touching your body. We're able to come up with a diagnosis. We're able to come up with an assessment. We're able to come up with the treatment. Uh, most times we treat you while you're right there or when you come in with a problem or you can take like, you know, a couple of weeks and stuff for your body to fully heal itself with the treatments that we're given. While with other people who use the same techniques they might not necessarily be diagnosing and even if they're diagnosing they don't or they're not able to like prescribe medications for example to help treat that problem if that makes sense sort of i know it's a little bit confusing um but yeah so as deals we learn different treatments um when i started um it was very hard trying to like understand how the body works because you're using your hands for everything um you learn how to figure out like where for example the where t5 is your fifth thoracic vertebrae and you can just feel for it and you can tell if it's not aligned or it's not where how it should be um we can tell like the alignment of your spine figure out like if it's rotated in a certain way that it should not be rotated if it's side bent in a certain way it should not be side bent um we could you know, tell if your muscles are not, are like super contracted um, and we can like offer treatments for that as well. Um, so yeah, there's several treatments that we learned, there's several different diagnoses that we do. You know, it's just a very cool, nice tool to have. It's one of the things that you can do, you can offer a patient while you're in the clinic with them. Like for instances, when I started medical school initially, like my first year of medical school, of course, all my classmates, every one of us, like we're studying like crazy. Everyone's necks are like bent this way, like your back hurts from all the studying and stuff. So usually after like a long study day, we might offer, you know, I and my roommates or my classmates might offer to just do some OMM with each other because we're practicing with each other and then we're helping out. And you know, you just kind of feel a little light after a long day. And just very recently during one of my rotations, I was um, really tired from standing all day. My preceptor noticed that my back hurt and I was trying so hard not to show that like I'm like, my back is hurting from all the standing. But he could tell my back was hurting and he just offered to do some OMM treatment on the back. And he set me up the right way and he just cracked my back. I had like four cracks down my back from one simple maneuver. And I was just feeling light afterwards. Like I could stand right, I could walk, like I just, the I felt better. Another instance in which OMM is helpful is OBGYN. OMM 
tends to be very helpful for for your patients like they would thank you they would come back over and over again just asking for that omm because you're really helping them relieve a lot of pain a lot of back pain and pressure um i've been with patients that talked about women just being wonderful. And as a student, I did a lot of volunteering work um, where I did OMT on people like at fitness centers and stuff like that. So after they're done working out, they would just come down and we just talk to them about OMT. And I would tell you guys, literally every time I went there, they would I'd have like the same three people who'd come to me like, could you do what you did to me last week? Because that, that was really helpful. So OMT does help. It honestly helps with like, it's just a nice body working thing that you could do for a patient and they would thank you. Of course, there are some treatments that some people might be like, um, I don't understand if that really truly works, but you know, go ahead. But there's other treatments that could work for some people. I'm not trying to like force feed OMM onto anyone or force feed DO into anyone or anything like that. I really, I'm just, um, giving my experience, having not known nothing about OMM to being in a DO school and doing OMT on people. So yeah, that OMM portion is just the only extra aspect that we learned. Of course, there's a lot of DOs who do not use OMM in their practicing fields. As a surgeon, you might not need to use OMM when you're practicing. As an ophthalmologist, I don't see you using OMM for much. I mean, there's a couple eye treatments, but but there are certain fields where OMM might be helpful. So like, like OBGYNs or family physicians, and you don't necessarily have to use it. You know, there's a lot of DOs who do not use OMM and there are some MDs who try to get like a year or two of OMM training so they could use that um, in their respectful fields. So it's really up to you, you know, to decide if you wanted to do that. But one thing that's for sure is every DO would diagnose a symptom and will treat you. They will recommend or prescribe medications for you. Medications isn't something that goes away if you're a DO. No, that's absolutely something that's needed in the medical field. You do need your medications to feel better. So it's just this extra tool to have if medicines aren't working or you don't want a medication and OMT seems to work. Yeah, so it's we're also doctors and you can go into whatever field you want to go into. So yeah. <laughs> Just a little lip gloss break so you guys can like the video okay i'm giving you guys some time to hit the like button if anything show my little visitor here some love and like the video look her she wants her stomach cuddles she wants her cuddles i gotta i have to do this video babes so yes do students definitely face discrimination there is the stigma, several reasons behind that, and I'm going to lay out some of them. It really depends on who you're speaking to, but um, this is just the general stigma, whatever that comes with like MDDO. First thing is when you are trying to apply to DO schools, most DO schools have a lower threshold or lower like averages when it comes to GPA and MCAT scores for the students that they take in. Um, so for example, when I was applying, most of the MD schools would have like an average GPA of like 3.6 or 3.5 and all of that, and MCAT scores of like 510 or 508 and above. Um, whereas most DO schools would have average GPA um, of like five point, I'm sorry, did I say five? <laughs> 3.2s and MCAT scores of like 502s or 500s or 501s, 504, for example. So the averages are lower, right, in DOs versus MD. Now, the reason behind this is that most DOs, like I said, emphasize a holistic approach when it comes to looking at applicants. So they don't care only about your scores. This is when I was applying. If things have changed right now, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Um, that's not to say that MD schools don't do that. There's a lot of MD schools, like I said, when I was applying, I did apply to MD schools that emphasize um, a holistic approach into um, looking at applications. There's tons of MD schools that definitely do that. Um, however, because DO schools are more known for their holistic approach, the GPAs tend to be a little lower. And that takes me to my second point. You tend to have a lot of non-traditional students um, in DO schools, and I like to think more in DO schools than in MD schools, just from the people that I've spoken to and the MD classmates that I have. In my class, there's a lot of non-traditional students. Um, and for those who don't know, non-traditional students, a student who did not go straight from undergrad to medical school. They probably took a couple years in between, might have worked, might have done like master's program, might have done like post -bacs. So in my class and in other classes, there's tons of non-traditional students that in fact, traditional students are not the norm. So I'm actually one of the younger ones in my class versus some of my, my college classmates who are in MD schools. 
their age is typically same or similar to most of their classmates and they're more traditional students than non-traditional students in their class so hopefully that sort of makes sense so that's one thing and so usually when people are looking at the stats they just automatically think well if you're taking lower stats that means that yours are not as smart or something like that but again that's why there's a holistic approach into looking into things because your grades on you know how you perform in on tests does not equate how you're going to be as a doctor or um, doesn't determine how good of a doctor you're going to be. So, and that's something that I appreciate that DO schools get passed. So the next thing is most people who are in the DO path and most DO students go into more primary care fields. So primary care includes um, like family medicine, internal medicine, OBGYN, geriatrics. We do have a stigma that, you know, DO students technically tend to go into more family care specialties versus not. However, that's not true. Competitive specialties are competitive for the for a reason. And so you do have lesser people going to those fields in general. However, yes, most DO students would go into family care, but that doesn't mean that if you go to a DO school, you're not gonna be able to match into super competitive fields. That's absolutely not true. There's always been people that match into um, surgical specialties, um, super competitive specialties. That's something that you're interested in doing. You're not limited um, in terms of what specialty you wanna to go to. You just have to be dedicated to whatever specialty you wanna to go to and go for it regardless of if you're MD or DO okay 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 so the next thing that I want to cover and this is like super important is um, where you can practice as a DO now this is something that I definitely had to sit down and think about because I am an international student I want to have the option of being able to practice back home if I'm not able to practice here or if I want to move to a different country I want to be able to have that um, flexibility of being able to practice medicine wherever I go. So this is something that I definitely looked into, especially again, being inter international, I wanted to make sure that before I go the DO route, that I'm actually able to use my DO degree back in my home country. So I definitely did my research. The list keeps growing every year. So as of right now, countries in green are the countries that do um, have practice in DO physicians with them. They definitely recognize DO, the US DO degree. Pretty sure with time, the list will continue growing as well. As an African, specifically Nigerian, I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to practice in um, different African countries because I don't know where I'm going to be again. I was very happy to see right before I started medical school that these African countries um, like see the DO degree as um, a medical degree and you're absolutely fine practicing in these countries if you have a US DO degree. The last thing I wanted to conclude on why I went to the DO route and you guys, it was a school that accepted me. <laughs> Honestly, aside from that, I did have the option of going to an MD school. It was a conditional acceptance. I had to do a year of like a post back training type thing where I'd get a master's and then I'd get into the medical school right after. Almost like definite that I would be going to the medical school, but I had to wait a year and I had to pay for that year and everything. So I definitely had that option. You know, at, at that point, there was really no difference and I had gotten the submissions from these schools, which are pretty good schools. So I was very happy, you know, taking and accepting my admission into these schools. And now that I'm a third year, if would I make the same decision? I absolutely will. I have enjoyed learning OMM. I do enjoy learning OMM and I do enjoy doing OMM on the patients that I do OMM on. I will be using OMM in my future practice because I've seen it work. I know it works and I personally enjoy doing them. So, um, you know, um, why not use all the tools you have for your patient, right? I would definitely choose DO again. And the only thing is I definitely wish there wasn't the stigma. To me, I feel like the stigma is only strong because people just look at you as, you know, you were not able to get into an empty school, so you went DO. That's a generic, like, belief most people have though that might be true for a good number of people myself included if i'm not if i'm being honest um if i'd had more md acceptances i would have gone because that belief is already a thing that is there and i'm like in my head i'm like i'm already international i don't want to have to add any extra like stressors on my you know resume and stuff like that but I wish that was not a thing. If that did not exist, you know, most people would definitely want to do deal because you do learn something extra for the same price and within the same time. So why not? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's pretty much what I have for you guys, MD versus DO. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned one or two things from this video. If you have any more questions, definitely leave, a like, leave it down in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer whatever questions that you have. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, you guys. Leave a comment in the comment section, support your girl, and I'll see you guys in the next one.